Good ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. It is that time we come together, we go live, and we do yet another mighty recap. Yes, your boy is back. Your boy is back after over two weeks of not trading because my account got frozen. I lost over six figures due to some nonsense that Joshua was doing to pull. But after fighting with customer service, after getting some help, I was able to get my account back in compliance and I'm back riding the horse to the best of my abilities. Mind you, I'm a little bit rusty. As you can see from the thumbnail, today is a big red day, but nonetheless, I am back and it feels good. It doesn't even matter. Red days doesn't even matter anymore. The fact that I have my account and I have the opportunity to trade every day, I'm blessed. All right. Recaps are back, as you can see as well. I'm going to be posting daily recaps to show you guys how much money either I make or lose. But most importantly, I'm going to be showing you the best strategies, the best stocks to trade, and how hopefully you can also carve a little bit of profit every day for your own life. All right, so let's get to it. Recap time. I'm a little bit rusty, not only not only for my trading, but also making YouTube, about make, making YouTube videos. So, you know, uh, bear with me on this video here. But anyways, p and I'm down 3000 $600, as you can see up right here, $3,600. Um, and to be honest with you, most of that loss came from Ticket take Symbol SAP. I got caught on this massive flush here with relatively big share size. And I didn't get caught on this flush alone. I also got stuck in this halt coming down. It capped down. I didn't bail out the moment it resumed. I tried to be a hero. I bought the dip and because I was over leveraged at this point, I lost after we flushed out at the very bottom, thinking that we were going to break through and under $6 per share. Um, you know, made it a very big loser here. Let me actually pull up my trader view metrics so that I can show you that big and fat loss. So these are my trader view stats. I'm down $3,600 in the day. My largest single dollar loss was $1,500. That was in Ticker Simple SAP. And, um, you know, it's right here. There's the trade I was going over on the other chart. Uh, you know, I thought we were going to bounce off of VWAP, bought this dip as we were testing VWAP, but immediately we teleported down, pinned into the hold down. I tried obviously to sell. I didn't want to get caught on that hold down. Getting caught on a hold down usually means that it's going to resume lower making your loss, you know, a little bit bigger. Gets halted, wasn't able to get any shares out of that and sought that almost at the very bottom, as you can see right there, right? So not very good, lost $1,500 there. Um, and, and not only I lost $1,500 in a single trade, I didn't find any profit anywhere. Like, it was my accuracy, let's see here. Accuracy, number of winning trades, 43% accuracy. Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Right, so the Mighty is definitely rusty. I've been traveling. I had no accounts. I've been trading with different brokers. I've been managing a big Tesla swing trade. If you remember, your boy is still holding. Your boy is still holding. And check out that price, right? Check out this price. Almost at 260. Your boy's holding. I'm going to make a separate video just going over that swing trade. You know, if you remember, if you remember, right? I had the very bottom. I was long $100,000 worth of stock at around 150. Stopped out at 139, like a clown. I saw it absolutely surge all the way up to 195. I didn't FOMO into it. I didn't FOMO into it after that surge. I waited for this dip. Got back in 167, added 170. I'm holding at an average of 171 dollars per share. I have 400 shares. I wasn't able to get full size like I like I had down here. I thought we were going to retest 160 again. But anyways, 400 shares, almost up 100 dollars per share. You know, we take it, we take it. But anyways, I won't get into that. I'm, I won't be showing any PNLs here about that. Let's just focus on day trading for this video. Um, so, okay, SAP. Into the open, sitting pre-market, I saw that this one was the one. This one, this one was our leading gapper, 
and he had made such a parabolic move pre-market. Any pre-market trader out there, you know, pre-market was where he's at, where he was at today. Um, you know, we essentially went straight up from five to eight, and the setups that are clear to me that I would have potentially taken was this one minute pullback. This one minute pullback after this fresh breakout, you know, looks pretty strong. Pre-market trading is a different beast from trading the open. Um, I would like to say that it's less choppy because there's less algorithms, there's less volume, and there's just less games being played. When the market opens, all the algorithms turn, you know, turn on, all the beginning traders start trading, and the stock, whatever the stock is, it just becomes inherently more choppy because people are buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. Such a mess of order, such a mess of volume. So it definitely takes more, you know, more patience and more discipline to trade at the open. Having said that, though, when a stock does pick a direction during the open, we can see bigger volatility than pre-market. So, anyways, this one we pull back here looked nice, um, you know, and then after that it went straight up. The only strategy I can think of, the break and hold of seven, then you do the same again for the break and hold of eight. Um, but you know, I don't trade pre-market anyway, so I'm not gonna hindsight trade this too much into the open I was looking at a dip at seven I kind of fumbled it because it came down it bounced very quickly at least on the ask it almost felt like the level two was lagging but I think it, that was just simply the price action this, this stock was given we did that at seven I got it I even called it out in chat watching dip at seven at the open I got in we bounced to like seven uh seven oh five seven ten but then we instantly slammed back down to around 690, 680. That price action right there in my eyes was not bullish at all. If we were going to bounce, we we're going to bounce straight away after the first retracement. And the fact that it came back down that aggressively and it was dancing, it scared me off the trade. I, I ended up taking a break even trade on it down here just to see it work right after, which was annoying. Um, anyways, went for, went for round two at VWAP. And that's when I got caught on that teleportation flush, losing way too much. Like, why am I, why am I losing this? If, if you've been following us, our trading team house, um, we were in Miami last week and we were trading together and you know how that goes. It's a room packed of traders. There's, you know, 11, 10, 12 of us trading at the same time in one internet connection. Everybody is yapping and rambling all at once. It's just a bit of a mess scenario to really trade dialed in. Last Monday, I, I recouped my account last week, um, but I only until now I'm posting videos because I was in Miami, so I didn't want to make videos there. But anyways, last Monday, I got my account. On Monday, lost $4,000 as well. So, you know, it looks like I'm coming a little too hot on Mondays. Um, and it does look like I'm in a little bit of a drawdown here. I try to import my metrics here for this video, but I trader view just has changed so much. I don't know. I don't know where is anything. So I'm probably gonna cover that on another video. But anyways, after that, um, I try to get back in the green, catching these bottoming tails. After this ma big rejection, oh, there's another big loss that I took here. So you know how we had a level of support down here, and that view up is down there. I try to take another position at around seven. Good old seven. This one was bullish because we had already reclaimed VWAP and we were essentially doing our first pullback. I thought we held in bounce of VWAP, off we went to eight and then pre-market highs. Short set us out in trouble, here we go. Um, again, same, set, same setup, in a seven, out at the very freaking bottom of this flush. Just to see it bounce back up like, it was, like if it was nothing. All right, I saw this and I was like, all right, market makers, market makers. Fool me once, you fool me again. Flushes again because of previous price action. I knew that there was a high chance to bounce back up. Caught a nice winning trade out of this bounce. Um, right, so I was down 5,000 at one point. Made back like 1,200 on that trade. I was like, good, let's do that again. Try that again here, another winning trade. But then I overstayed my welcome. And as you can see, as time went on, volume started to decrease. And that meant that spreads were opening up opening up and opening up even more in these two in these two setups it worked fine but in this one even though i bought that dip and it bounced and it reclaimed 
I lost money, I lost money, and I lost some more money. Just because, you know, I was jumping in down there, 680, was getting filled at 710, or at 7, it would, be, it would bounce all the way up to 705. I would say orders on the ask, you know, for 5 cents a gain, which is nothing compared to the risk I'm taking. So if I did get some shares filled, it would only be for a 5 cent gain. But if it came back down looking like if it was going to dump to zero, I would be catching 30, 20 cent loss on the rest of the shares. So I go right to the spread here, go right to the spread here. And then this flush, I was like, all right, this is, this, this is, you know, this is it. This is it. Either we're going to bounce from here or. Or we might die right after. See, I don't know who. But somebody was buying big size, especially around that seven level. All these bottoming wicks you see here. Somebody was accumulating a massive position in like in here. And that's why I was that's why I was so bullish to keep buying those dips because I thought one of these is going to completely reverse and swipe all the way up to new highs. Um but hey, we might do that still. We might do that still, but um, I don't think I'm going to take part of that. This stock has been choppy. I'm already on my max loss. And something that I, do, I don't do very well, which some of the guys at the house did very well, was leaving the trading station, going out into the pool or, or, or lunch or whatever it is, and then come back and continue to trade with the same aggressiveness and the same type of accuracy. Every time I'm out of the zone, I'm out of the zone. So if I start trading this, I don't think I'm going to make that much progress. And even if I make money, it wouldn't be to the level that I could at the open. So for me, the best window to try again is tomorrow morning at market, at market open. But anyways, friends, I am back. My account is back. Um, I don't think I'll make a video about it because this was really, truly just a um, something that only happens to international traders in Charles Schwab. Most of my audience is American, America. So, um, you know, whatever I had to do to regain compliance, you know, you don't, you don't have, you don't care about it, right? Because it wouldn't affect you. But it was essentially I just had to fill in a bunch of documents about the way I use leverage, uh, a bunch of documents about where I reside. Um, the, the tax treaties that different countries have. Um, I also had to to fill in a document for risk, the risk of margin calls. Um, you know, explaining why I was trading so much and using so much share size. Um, you know, it, it's just the broker doing its part because an international trader is inherently more risky than an American trader. Because an American trader has an American address that they can go and knock their door at any time and be like, hey, you blew up going short. You owe this broker this much money. Or, hey, um, I don't know, whatever the case is, right? An international trader lives in no, man, no man's land. I live in El Salvador, right? So, you know, if I ever blew up my account or did something risque, you know, the IRS, Shao Schwab, or whoever it is could never come to me because I'm living in the dumps, right? So I have to fill in all this crap so that they so that they view me as a safer customer. But anyways, uh, that's that. And then this thing is curling up. If you're going, going to continue to trade, make sure to take it easy. It's been the mighty. Um, my live trading is posted. If you want to see my live trading, it's been posted in the first link down below. That's where I post my daily trades, daily live trading. That's where I go live to trade with my students. So if you want to check that out, it's the first link down below. Anyway, spin the mighty, stay safe, stay green. The mighty is back.